What's up guys, it's Russ from Scotch and Iron and welcome to the first edition of Behind the Design. So I thought it would be fun to start making videos, talk about the history and maybe some of the backstory behind some of the designs that I decided to put on garments. So this is the first time I've done a video of this length. It'd be awesome if you would subscribe to my channel. It would definitely give me some motivation to keep trying to make more. So today I'm going to give you a brief history on why the Toyota FJ40, or better known as the Land Cruiser 40 series, is possibly the single reason why Toyota even exists today, and why the Land Cruiser has proven itself as one of the most formidable off-road vehicles ever produced. Now I know a lot of you Jeep guys are going to be sour about some of these facts, but let's be real. No other truck has proven itself worldwide in the consumer market to be more reliable, unstoppable, in either freezing cold Arctic climates or the burning deserts of Saudi Arabia, Africa, and beyond. Before I jump into the history of the FJ, one thing that is asked often about these trucks is does the J and FJ come from the term Jeep? Technically yes, but not the Daimler Chrysler version that everyone is familiar with today. Rather it was the Willys Overland produced Jeep, or more technically known as the Willys MB, and later the Ford produced GPW. So in 1941, the founder of Toyota Motor Corporation, Kichiro Toyota, penned a magazine article in which he expressed his dream and determination to produce a car fully made into Japan just as Ford and Chevrolet did in America. From this dream to produce a Japanese motor vehicle, the resulting Land Cruiser became the driving force that led Toyota into ever-expanding world markets and ultimately setting the bar in off-road reliability and performance. So roughly 10 years later in 1950, the US Army invited Japan car makers to bid to produce a 4x4 truck as a possible supplement to the Willys Overland military truck. The prototypes submitted for the military contract were not selected to be produced by the US Army. However, during the bid testing, the Toyota BJ proved to be a superior vehicle to the Willys Jeep as it had larger piston displacement, longer wheelbase, and a larger body. Shortly after the bid prototype was produced, Toyota test driver Ichiro Tayara successfully took the BJ to the sixth hill station of Mount Fuji, farther than any other truck had made it before. In 1951, after seeing its proven ability at Mount Fuji, the Japan police force adopted it as a national patrol vehicle and the Toyota BJ started production. In June of 1954, responding to claims of trademark violation by the Willys Overland Company that produced the original Jeep, the then director of Toyota Technology renamed the BJ the Land Cruiser. It was from here that the Land Cruiser began its global dominance and demonstrated global competitiveness against its rival models, the Land Rover, the Jeep, and other similar vehicles. The Toyota Crown, Toyota's passenger sedan vehicle, was first released in Japan in the mid-1950s. From 1956 on, as part of Toyota's strategy, the company decided on what was called the Land Cruiser strategy for foreign markets. Given the fact that the Land Cruiser's performance could hold its own against rival models such as the Willys Jeep and the Land Rover, Toyota decided it was the right time to expand in foreign markets. Then in 1955, alongside production of the BJ-type Land Cruiser, the 20 Series made its debut, and in 1956, the Land Cruiser was the first Toyota car to be mass-produced and distributed to foreign markets, starting with Saudi Arabia and Brazil. In 1958, the first 20 Series Land Cruisers first landed on American shores and also in Europe when it was introduced at the Barcelona Motor Show in Spain. In 1960, the FJ-type took an evolutionary step into the 40 Series. Though there was very little change in the external appearance of the vehicle, production techniques were modernized with the introduction of large-scale press equipment. Moreover, a low-range subgear was added to the transfer case, which improved both acceleration and performance on bad roads. The 40 Series lineup included the short wheelbase F40, which included a soft top and a light band hardtop model, the middle wheelbase FJ43, and a long wheelbase FJ45. In 1974, the BJ series debuted, which put a B-type diesel engine in the 40 series chassis. At the time, a 2.8 liter piston displacement was thought to be at the upper limits for a four-cylinder diesel engine, but the B-type extended the piston capacity to three liter. From 1960 to 1984, the 40 series saw very few changes made in the external appearance of the vehicle. By 1965, global production exceeded 50,000 vehicles, becoming the best-selling Toyota vehicle in the U.S. By 1972, global production reached 200,000, and in 1973, production reached 300,000. By the time 1981 rolled around, the Land Cruiser had reached over 1 million in global production. But by 1984, it would mark the production for the FJ40, which was replaced by the J70 series trucks. Today, the FJ Land Cruiser remains a very popular option for off-roading collectors. Replacement parts seem to be readily available through Toyota, 
and Toyota parts departments worldwide. So if you're interested in getting into an F40, a quick browse around the local listings shows very clean versions available in the mid-teens that are perfect candidates for full or partial restoration. More rare versions of the FJ are those that have already undergone extensive restoration, regularly sell from the low to mid-20s all the way up to the high 30s and beyond. If you're among one of the very lucky that have about 150,000 to 200,000 to invest into a retro 4x4 and only the best will do, you can contact the FJ company and get in line for one of their amazing concourse built FJ restorations. I've personally drooled over these trucks at the SEMA show in Las Vegas, but let's be real, there's not enough change in my couch cushions for one of those. If you're interested in one of those beautiful FJ company builds, I'll leave a link to the description below and you can check them out. I have to admit that in the process of making this video, it's created an itch for me to pick up one of these FJs before the prices are out of reach. This always seems to happen when all these TV show auctions blow car values into oblivion. So I really hope you enjoyed the first installment of Behind the Design and please take a look at our FJ t-shirt if there's any still available. It's very hard for me to find the time to make these videos, but I'm hoping to do my best to expand my video content. It would mean a lot to me if you would subscribe to my channel. Hit that like button and share this with anyone you know that would enjoy it. And please comment below, let me know what you think. I'm learning this YouTube and video stuff, so your feedback, it's appreciated. And hopefully it'll motivate me to make more videos. Again, this is Russ from Scotch and Iron. And remember, those who create earn the greatest reward. Talk to you soon. So today I'm gonna to give you a brief history on why the Toyota, Toyota Land Cruiser, fucking AC. So today I'm gonna to give you a, so today I'm gonna get, so today I'm gonna give you a, no other truck has proven itself worldwide, worldwide, the burning deserts of Saudi Arabia, Before I jump into the history of the FJ, one thing that is, before I jump into the, yes, but not, mm -hmm.